Brave Hearts, Urbanites, Coach Mad Hatters, Vineyard, Creatrix, Crimson Velvet VIPs. We're coming to a close of this video marathon. This, um, this, um, it's what I'm calling, um, what am I calling this? What am I calling this? Incredible sense of scenery. Um, we are calling it Theus Thimbo Tarot Summits. And uh, I didn't initially figure that this was what was going to happen. I just fell into the groove. And when I recognized the pattern, it's like, okay, well, we are going to stick with it. Um, I hadn't been recording in a while. So um, I had already told myself that I was going to make a few um, adjustments. And I know that this is circumstantial. Because I am not a... <clears throat> I am not what's considered a professional YouTuber. Um, the reasons why I post is totally different from the majority. So my um, posting frequency was always going to be a bit different. Now, since we had so much fun with the last segment talking about sexual healing and sacred sensuality, I figured we would tap into uh, this deck again and I'm whatever shows up. So I left this particular slot as the wild card. So we're going to go with whatever shows up. And I'm going to off the cuff see if I can talk about it. See what comes to mind um, between these cards and the tarot cards on what it is that we are going to be discussing. Um, um I was, mm, I think the last segment I'm going to dedicate to um, doing another walkthrough of my um, Astro Artisan 101. So um, I have been um, sending the curriculum and not the in-depth curriculum because it is a asynchronous intensive. So is mainly um, the course is mainly um, an outline that I produced and then um, the enlistee fills in according to um, what happens when they begin to um, engage the information that is inside of this um, intuitive study this is not what would be considered official coursework but you still are learning but it's in the realm of self-discovery you're learning these things for the sake of knowing you better i sent out the syllabus to a few people um, and all with the understanding that folks are busy they got their own things going on so it is mostly for those that are already on this path and they um just uh, require um, provoking, provoke, pro provocateurs. I like that word. But they uh, they seek small seedlings or sparks to their creativity to um, encourage how they ponder and think about things, to challenge them, to think about themselves and their situation in a different kind of light. Especially in terms of taking the right and wrong channels off. I, I'm hoping that I get through to say stop judging oneself and the unfolding of his life in terms of right or wrong. I don't think there's anything that concrete that can be the, the authority, the universal authority of when something is right and when something is wrong. And 
the presence of satisfaction or dissatisfaction does not determine right or wrong. <clears throat> and I think it's worth mentioning, and I use this a lot, just to kind of put folks in a different kind of frequency. When I'm dissatisfied with you, that doesn't make you wrong. And if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, then some self-reflection has to occur. If I think that you're wrong and it's outlandish and it's unreasonable, I am the one that need to do a self-check. And I always speak in terms of first person with that particular sentiment because it starts with me. Does it mean I get it satisfactory all the time? No. No. I'm inside my Chiron return. And so, mythologically speaking, Chiron is the deity. It's the celestial. Is it a deity? Is Chiron a deity? I know it's part of the, um, the astro pantheon. It's up there with the planets, but I don't even think it's a planet. Um... But I'm going through my Chiron return, which is a three-year timeline, and it happens age 49 to 51. And it's just like a Saturn return that it happens, whether you acknowledge it or not. There is an un influx of frequencies that um, conduct these lifelong learning lessons that one ought to be cataloging when it gets to that age. Um... Having this knowledge equips, it has, let me, let me speak for me. Having this law, knowledge has equipped me with a different kind of awareness about my maturity. And everybody's Chiron return is different. Just like everybody's birthday is different. Every, all the people around here celebrating their 49th birthday, the 49th birthday, everybody ain't going to have the same experience. Everyone is not going to have the same experience. Astrology is just like that. It is just as customizable as the handprint of each individual. Everybody came here to have a different experience. The planets are having a different experience with every earthling here. Whether the earthling acknowledged this courtship or not. Pluto going to show up in your life regardless of whether you want to acknowledge it or not. If you don't acknowledge Pluto, then it'll just be like, why in the world is this shit happening to me? I must be the most unfavorable person on the planet. And then you go read about Pluto and then you see that it's all purposeful and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay. And if nothing if nothing flies out, then we just gonna turn the bottom of the deck. But let's see. Let's give it a moment to see what it wants to say. Um I have this paper in front of me that is from notes that I took on the 13th, which was just two days ago. Um, and I know you can't see the, the print, but it was me taking a look at the lock and key. If you're familiar with the TV series Lock and Key that's on Netflix. It's about this old mansion 
that has all of these keys and the different keys do different things and when the series first started I was under the impression that it was only the handful of keys that was being showcased in the series. Come to find out Lock and Key is an entire comic book collection. I'm noticing how more and more um, comic book storylines are being brought to life through these um, Terry these TV series so I had no clue that it was um, part of a comic book pantheon I had no idea but the more and more I started researching it the more and more I found out there are a lot more keys than was presented in presented in that series Thirty-three keys to be exact. Thirty-three keys. And it's quite amazing what some of these keys can do. So, of course, metaphorically thinking, as I always do, wondering what would happen if we began to treat these keys inside of our non-physical spaces in terms of acknowledgement and knowing what it can do and how we activate it um, non-physically, how it dwells from the inside out. Of course, it... Um, requires one to learn more about the keys and what they all do and um, how it can then be put into practical means because some of them are truly of a fantastical nature. Um, but I've noticed that when a person challenges themselves to think beyond its normalcy. Like if it challenges itself to ponder something that it might regularly had disagreed with or ponder something that might go against all of its principles. Because as I said in the other segment, we talking about OPP. Like is it your principle or is it a principle that you were groomed to value? Like is it a principle? Is it other people's principles that you value? Or is it yours, you yourself, yours? Um, there is a smorgasbord of principles out here. And so um, to not have sex until you married is a principle. It's a religious principle, but it's still a principle all the same. If you do not honestly feel like you want to be inside of that parameter, release yourself from it. And don't feel no guilt about it. Because that is a principle that was established by another set of humans just like you. But yet they presented it as if it was universal. And so, yeah, that's where everybody get fucked up at. I'm not saying it's a bad principle. I'm not saying it's a good principle. I am saying that if it's a principle that seems to be governing your life and it's not working for you. If it doesn't fit. Okay, so I think we're going to take it from the bottom since nothing wants to come out. Um, it's probably saying that what I have in front of me, it will probably be the, it'll be the key. All right. Um, 
So, inside of the world of synonyms, is it synonyms, acronym? I'm not sure. But keys is keep educating yourself. And I think from that, putting it together with all of the wondrous things these keys can do, that it might be quite amazing what one learns about itself if it just takes a wee bit of time and learns something for the sake of itself, learning something for the sake of its self-discovery, looking for yourself inside of the pages, inside of the study, inside of the curriculum. Because as a society, I often hear the complaint is, and it's been my complaint too, so I'm not going to act like it's not. It's been my complaint that I spent all of this time in school and nobody ever talked about my kinfolk. And yet my kinfolk was making just as astonishing moves and strides in history as any other cultural denomination. But when I sat in school, I learned about my oppressors' heroes. I learned about my oppressors' kinfolk. I went to a I went to schools that were named after people that slaughtered my people. I have a diploma <coughs> from a school built off of the legacy of folks that took great pride in capturing and breeding other humans. All of the libraries are named after the folks that have caused my people so much hardship. And yet I am supposed to take pride in this diploma. I'm supposed to take pride in the fact that I spent all of my learning years learning about socially engineered concepts. And there were Okay, we're going to hear you because ain't nothing else coming out. Oh, wow. Okay. Shapeshifter. That's interesting. Transform and unveil your gifts. Wow. Okay, you know what? We're going with that one. Oh, and animal. Oh, okay. And so animal guardian was right off the other side. Uh, trust your instincts. That's what's up. That is what's up. And so we we going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the metaphorical values of shape-shifting. And we shape-shift a lot, whether we want to acknowledge it or honor it or put it on front street as far as our awarenesses are concerned. Those that are in tune with themselves know they shape shift according to person, place, or thing. I say it all the time. My sons are not the same guys in front of me as they are with they homies. That's just that the way that works. I wasn't the same girl, not the same girl in front of my dad as I am in front of my girlfriends. It's just not the same. Not the same me. There are ebbs and flows and levels and, and volumes to this thing. I'm not the same person in front of my cosmetology students as I am in front of my cosmetology peers. So, to transform and unveil your gifts. And the animal guardian, I have been talking more and more about the acknowledgement and the identifying of one's animal spirit. Now, I say the most natural way to do that is just um, identify the animals that you are drawn to. Um, if you are not drawn to any animal at all, that's a tough one. Huh? That's a tough one. I'm not sure what that life be like. Because um, I have an entire roster. I have an entire roster. 
when it comes to animals that I identify with. Um, the great mother dragon is the first and foremost. Then it's the wise old owl. I love owls. I love them. Even the one that comes, um, you don't you don't hear them all the time. But in the middle of the night, you can hear it. And you can tell it's an owl. You know that if if you live in a space where there is a lot of uh, livestock, where there are, uh, you know, flora and fauna, like all the animals, like um, Because I know when I say animals, it might make it seem like I am outside of the city limits. But I've even seen in the snowy time, I've even seen a deer. But it's the city. I'm, I'm situated in the city. I'm off the beaten path, but I'm still situated in the city where you don't necessarily see deers hopping fences. <laughs> but one we it was the wee hours of the morning and it was snowing. And it was sitting right there in the yard looking around and it was such a majestic moment but that's what i mean when i say uh, certain animals so there's always a whole bunch of different species of birds because my dad feed the birds so out back there's about three feeders and he feed the squirrels um he literally goes to um lowe's or home depot and get the squirrel bars so to say the least, the backyard on any given moment is always full of all kinds of little creatures. The bird feeders attract seasonal birds as well as birds that we've identified pretty much live right here in the in the trees out back. <clears throat> But not everybody pays attention to that. Some folks go along their day not even realizing they ain't heard not one bird sing. And if they might, it might not even be a thing for them. They might not even give a fuck. But still, for those that do pay attention to it, for those that incorporate it in its calm or in its meditations, stuff like that, um, those that know for a fact that the natural symphony of things helps them process better I think the shape-shifting part of the message is definitely speaking in along those terms along those lines um, trusting um, the instinct means that you have some kind of clue of your animal spirits Black Panther and not Marvel's Black Panther. No, I'm talking about the real cat. I'm talking about the real feline. <laughs> the characteristics of a black, a female Black Panther. The one that's in the wild. <laughs> Her characteristics. The way she handled things. Is paramount to the version of me that believes it's on the front lines, not fighting against flesh and blood. And not even fighting against these religious principalities that I've been conditioned to believe in. I'm not even talking about those. There is a galactical frequency, the one that's attached to your celestial body that animates this earthling avatar that source that's the one that is the ferocious female black panther interesting okay well I, yeah i wasn't expecting this to take the tone so okay so let's see what the cards have to say um and i can feel me running out of steam so i don't know if um we're going to conclude this today, <clears throat> but I have already, um, I've already fulfilled the obligation of me hearing earlier today. We're going to be recording all day. Like it just popped up in my head. We're going to be recording all day. Okay, fine. All right, cool.
we can rock with that. So it is now Thursday, September 15, 2022, 4 10 p.m. DMV Standard Time. And so, obligation fulfilled. I may not even do the um, Astro Artisan 101 walkthrough as a part of this series. I might just make it separate because I it's a it's a rather lengthy walkthrough. It's about my seven week course. And it's quite a bit of information to intake. And I think I want to be fresh of energy when I do that. I want to be at the top of my day where my energy is its most potent so that I can give it <coughs> its proper presentation. And then more than likely the walkthrough will be on Zoom so that I can screen share. Because when we walking through that type of stuff, I would prefer for you to be looking at that stuff instead of looking at me. <laughs> um, so trust your instincts, transform and unveil your gifts. Before I found out about my natal chart, the, 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 the things that are inside of my natal chart, this is about to kind of work me I don't know is it working me maybe so maybe not um, <clears throat> my birth chart that's where I found my true gifts no, no 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 that's where the confirmation of my true gifts reside understanding My Mercury being in Sagittarius, 22 degrees. My Mars being in Aries, 6 degrees. My Jupiter being in Sagittarius, 23 degrees. My North Node being in Aquarius, 5 degrees. Just that that I just rolled off to you explains why I am the type of communicator that I am. My Saturn being in Gemini. Oh, zero degrees retrograde. We was just talking about this earlier today. Those that know the components of my birth chart never treat me like I'm weird or odd or out of place because they already understand certain frequencies. That's why I say, if you're dealing with somebody who wants to complain about who you are because it agitates them so much, Oh, <laughs> because it agitates them so much, then it's really a situation of they don't know you as well as they should, or they are way more judgmental than they should. Either way, uh, the disadvantage of not understanding someone's energetic frequency is... In my opinion, unnecessary now. If we get to dealing with folks and we are aiming to make them a significant other, that whole blindly trying to attach to folks, that's unnecessary now. Because you can get a sinistry reading. You can get, And there are folks out here that are into it. That it's their life's work to read the energies that are part of your natal makeup, study astrology so that they can understand compatibility versus competition. Most of the time we be getting into these daggone love affairs and we be doing it blindly. We end up sleeping with the enemy or someone who is secretly competing with us. That don't even feel like love. How are we attaching to folks that do not naturally endorse us? 
it hurts to give a compliment. We in these long-term relationships where you barely feel tolerated, let alone celebrated. And I don't want to hear this shit about that's what happens when people be together for a long time. Mm-mm, baby, because I done seen some. And all life had to do was show it to me. All it had to do was let me know that it exists. And now I'm shifting my paradigms. I'm changing the whole way I speak about it. And I've seen genuine love 30, 40 years. And they still promote one another. Not only do they promote one another, they in business together. You want to, oh, you want, mm, you want to know this was something that is so very sexy to me. Those that are in business for themselves and promote each other let alone when they are able to be on projects together. When they able to go and get it together. They the boardroom buddies. Like they tag team in the boardroom. Can you imagine the type of championship? The energy that flows within that, that unity. Can you imagine? And very little people can because they forever leading with sex. She got a fat ass and put a ring on it. <laughs> and then the woman is just so happy to be selected. All that we're working to change all of that up. We're working to change how we approach one another. We working to be honest, to say, I just want to play, or I am showing up to build. Or I am curious about me. So um, hoping you curious about you and then together we can be curious about each other. I'm a Diego and I'm looking for a Dora to explore. <laughs> I'm just throwing shit out there. <laughs> and in my opinion, it's going to be all instinctual it's going to all be combined in this thing that is having us transform and unveil our gifts somewhere in that nougan and you trusting your instincts this is going to show up and it might show up in you like this doesn't have to be excuse me this doesn't have to be another human for the sake of clarity If I don't believe in nothing else, I believe in clarity. But I believe in more stuff. But I'm just saying, if I don't believe in nothing else. The page of swords resembles someone who is full of energy and ideas eager to share. It suggests a new form of communication. I was just speaking about aces and some odd reason I can't recall if it was part of this segment or the one before things are starting to run together. That's how I know it's time to lay it, lay it down. But anyway, I was talking about aces instead of alphas. I'm curious to find out how many paradigms are going to shift off of this one because I ain't letting this rest. We're going to get out of this whole alpha tendency because somehow it screams hierarchy. Ace screams champion. It screams tribe. Alpha screams hierarchy. I'm over you. Ace screams I'm standing right beside you or I'm right behind you. Male or female. Let's not get it twisted. Male or female. These are the first two cards out. Well, this is the way that it was. These are the first two cards out. So usually it's said in tarot. The first two cards and the last two cards are the most potent with regards to if with regards to how we are to remember or what it is we are to honestly take away from the session. 
that's not true. These are the first two tarot cards. This is what sets the pace. Trust your instincts. Transform and unveil your talents. Speak about it in, new, in the new terms that it is showing up. Love you first. Become intrigued about the things that are not readily available to your acknowledgments about you. Give yourself the compliments you deserve. Give your talents the compliments that they deserve. Become aware of your animal spirit totems. Don't do yourself an uh, uh, injustice by getting into situations that go against your natural sensibilities. And if you're already in situations that compromise your natural sensibilities, it's time to shape shift. It's time to shape shift. Some circumstances will be a little bit more easier to. Uh, adjust or conform or whatever you want to call it um, to redirect, reconform. I don't know. Some situations are a little bit more flexible than others. But if you set the intention and you don't give up on the promises that you make to yourself, then I am a firm believer and receiver of such action. Some things take longer than others to unfold. But if it's, part, if, if it's already part of your path, if you are returning back to your natural sensibilities because of a detour, you're not going to be on that detour for long because you've redirected, you've course corrected your intentions. If you had good intentions but made some unsavory decisions, I think what it is that you saw once you got there or what it is that you um, observed on the way there or what was happening in the journey of it all is the most important. The fact that you figure like that decision was unsavory and only you, only you have the power to prevent forest fires. That internal forest fire that says you fucked up and now you are a fuck up. Only you can prevent forest fires. And if someone else figured like you made the wrong decision or you fucked up the situation, that's point of perspective. Maybe from where they're sitting, they are so displeased that they feel like you fucked up the whole thing. But do you honestly feel like you fucked up the whole thing? Or can you somehow, some way, be like, you know what? My intentions was good with that. I actually have no control over the other players that was part of that situation. I held mine. Now, it might not have turned out the way we was expecting it to. And some of the things that I did do, folks might not be happy with. But I understand why I did what I did when I did it. If you can reconcile it on that level then the experience was yours to have regardless of the outcome. Because everything ain't going to be joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Everything not, uh -huh, honey. With every day, with every passing day, I'm finding out that that pain is just as powerful and it transmute just as well. All right. This might be it. This might be it. Um, so, this was still a good message with four cards on the board. With four very synchronized cards on the board. Very, very interesting. Okay, all right. Um, 
to take a look at the bottom of the deck. It's interesting because I almost want to keep shuffling. Page of Pentacles. So with these two pages on the board, with these two pages on the board, something is having me believe that our new beginnings is what we ought to be directing our attentions to. Um, new beginnings everywhere if you want to start cooking more start cooking more the beginning of that timeline is going to be rather rewarding you want to paint the beginning of that adventure is going to be rewarding you want to start writing books reading books because there is a genre for folks to read to others get started and that's a um that's one personally for me, just with my whole um, wanting to establish, continue to establish myself as a narrator. Tapping into those waters. Um, it is tapping into frequencies of the unknown. So I find myself being a bit intimidated. But this right here is telling me that I have to trust that and follow it. Uh, and it doesn't mean that it's going to become lucrative in the uh, coin, in the sense of one's coins, but it just might. It just might be just as rewarding mentally as it is financially or intellectually, just as well as it is financially. As we trust our instincts and transform and unveil our gifts okay we stepping into the ace phenomenon we stepping into the ace phenomenon we don't need no more alphas not in the physical sense of things we don't need no more alphas we need aces we need champions, male or female, masculine and feminine. And the harmonization of this type of love, whether it's for self or others, and how that gets synchronized, serendipitously synchronized. I've been talking about serendipity for a while now. So, yeah, that's the way love goes. Yeah, it's time for my day to come to a close. I feel it. I feel it. It's just draining. I feel it. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to get on... Um, the Astral Artisan 101 walkthrough as soon as humanly possible. And until next time, I wish you well.